One of the best things to do in home automation is to turn things on and off remotely, especially lights. And so far, what I found to be the easiest way to turn your lights on and off remotely is right here. This is a Sonoff Basic. This little guy has a Wi-Fi chip, a relay, and a power converter for about five bucks. The best part about the Sonoff is how flexible and capable it becomes when you flash it with Tasmoda firmware, which makes it easy to connect and control with Home Assistant. I've got to give all the credit here to Theo Arend for making this Tasmoda firmware. It's really good. Sonoff should seriously pay him like a gajillion dollars and just put his software on all of their switches. There are several guides already that will show you how to flash new firmware onto one of these Sonoff ports. I tried four or five different methods before I finally found one that worked for me. What I finally got working was using the Arduino IDE on a Windows PC. I tried using Atom and Platform IO. I tried using my Mac. I kept getting errors of all different kinds. So here's the process that I went through that worked for me. Step one is buy some Sonoffs. This is the lowest price I've seen. But if you wanna buy a batch, here's a link to a pack of five. You're also gonna need one of these. This makes it so your computer can connect to your Sonoff and upload the firmware. Now let's take a look at the connections on the Sonoff. Okay, this is the Sonoff Basic. Uh, when you take the cover off, you need to keep track of which of these terminals is neutral and which is line or hot because once you take this cover off there's no labels here that tell you and then in here these are the pins you're going to use to connect your USB adapter to your Sonoff. We'll use GPIO 14 later when we connect this to our light switch. Your USB to serial adapter should come labeled so you'll know which pins are which. If you've got one that has 3 volt or 5 volt output Make sure you set it to three volt or you could damage your Sonoff. Now this is really important. The transmit pin from the USB adapter goes to the receive pin on the Sonoff and vice versa. So RX goes to TX and TX goes to RX. Okay, to install Tasmoda software on your Sonoff boards, first thing you'll have to do is download Tasmoda. If you just search, Tasmoda, go to this GitHub page, then under releases and grab the source code. So download that, extract it, and you'll have all the parts here that you'll need. We're going to come back to some of this. Start by downloading that. The next thing that you'll need is the Arduino IDE if you don't already have it. So arduino.cc software, pick the version that you want. I tried it on my Mac. It didn't work. I don't know exactly why, but I just did it on Windows and it worked. So I did this non-administration install. So grab that, download it wherever you're gonna put it. It is nice to contribute if you can. Once you've downloaded the Arduino IDE, go to the folder where you have your Arduino.exe file. If you don't know where it is, just go to your search bar, search for Arduino EXE. First thing you need to do is just go to this folder. So open file location. And then you need to make a new folder in the same folder as the Arduino.exe file and call it portable. I've already done it. Once you've done that, now we can start the Arduino.exe. You probably get a blank here. You'll get usually whatever the last sketch was that you edited. Go to File, Preferences, and then down here under Additional Board Managers. This will be in the description. You can copy and paste it in here. Next thing we need to do is grab a couple libraries. So under Sketch, go to Include Library, Manage Libraries. The two that we need are JSON, so just type JSON and then find this one here, the Arduino JSON. You see I already have it installed. The next one that you'll need is PubSub Client. Make sure that's installed. All right, once those are installed, close that. Once you've installed the PubSub Client library, go back to the folder that you created called Portable, and there will now be some stuff inside of it. You have to navigate pretty deep into this. Once you get inside Portable, go to Sketchbook, Libraries, PubSub Client, SRC, and now you'll find pubsubclient.h, this file here. You need to edit it in Notepad++ or something similar. Open it up, find the line that says define MQTT max packet size. Yours will not say 512, but you need to change it so that it does say 512. Change that, hit save, close it, and you're done with that. Now we can go to where we saved our Tasmoda and open the Sonoff Arduino sketch. Tasmoda, Sonoff, Tasmoda, in the Sonoff folder, and then you can open sonoff.ino. So when you open the sonoff.ino, 
you'll get this whole long string of the files that are included. The only one that you need to do anything with is the user underscore config.h, this guy right here. In this file, scroll down to this section where you'll define your Wi-Fi name and password. And if you have a second one, you can put in here a backup in case it can't connect to the first one for some reason. If you don't have a second, it's not a problem. Scroll down a little more, and here is where you will put in your MQTT information. If you use TLS with your MQTT broker, then put your information in here. I don't use TLS. Mine is hosted locally on the same Pi as my home assistant. If that's the case for you, you put the IP address of your MQTT broker right here. The port should be the same. Then your MQTT broker username and password go here. And that's it. You can save it and you're done. Most likely you'll want to have more than one of these Sonoffs working in your house. After you've set up the first one, each time you set up a new one, you need to come to the user config.h file and you need to change the project name. The MQTT topic that the Tasmoda firmware creates is based on this project name. So if they're the same for all of your switches, they won't work. You don't need to get too creative with how you rename your subsequent Sonoff projects. Just add a number to the end. If you put a number at the end here, it will show up in the MQTT topic with that number. So if I put a one here, then in my MQTT topic, it'll say Sonoff one. Those topic names are gonna be important when we go into Home Assistant and set up our switches. When you have everything changed in your user config file, highlight the Sonoff tab, go under Tools, and make sure you have all of these settings that you see here. For board, you'll need to select the generic ESP8266 module. Flash mode needs to be D out. That was a problem for me. I had it as DIO initially and wasn't working. It needs to be set to D out. Flash frequency is 40, CPU frequency is 80, flash 1, M64K spiffs. Under port, make sure you select the port that shows up after you've connected your USB to serial link board. Now you can connect your USB adapter to your computer, then connect the ground, receive, and transmit wires to the Sonoff board. Next, hold the black button down and then insert the three volt wire on the Sonoff. My computer made a chime that let me know I'd done it correctly. And that should be it. Once that's all done, you can hit upload and hope for the best. My USB adapter had an orange LED that would blink when the software was uploading. And when it was done flashing, the Sonoff has a green LED that will flash once. If that happened for you, congratulations, you did it. I wrote a number on my Sonoffs to correspond with the project name so that I would remember which was which when I set them up in Home Assistant. Now follow the same process for all the Sonoffs you've got. In the next video, I'll show you how to connect one of these Sonoff boards to an existing light switch in your wall and then get it set up on Home Assistant. Well, hope that was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Always happy to help. Far from an expert at anything, but I'll do my best. We'll see you next time. Adios.